Anise Kizzlebash with me from Mindful Sales Training. Hello, Anise. Hello, Hannah. Hi, ladies. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. Now, I personally am really interested to watch this webinar myself because I hate selling. So you are hopefully going to teach us how to sell without being pushy. Wonderful. I look forward to it very much. Okay, brilliant. So I am just going to switch over and put Anise as a presenter so she can share her, her slides with you. Um, and then I'm going to take myself off screen. Um, so I'm going to hand you over to Anise. Wonderful. Hi, ladies. So I'm going to show you my screen now, okay? So you won't see me. I don't really want to see myself in the corner throughout the whole time. So I'll click to my screen now, okay? Show my screen, please, computer. This worked in rehearsal. Please bear with me. I'm, um, I'm clicking share my screen. Are you going down to the uh, PowerPoint presentation? Um, can you? Am I going to the PowerPoint presentation? It, it's got show my screen on the. Um, Uh, hold on. Oh dear, what's going Always on? Always technical glitch live. This is why live, <laughs> live presentation. Um, it's saying, um, please close confident. Uh, da, 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 show my screen. Oh, I think we're there. Yes? Yes, brilliant. Yeah, wonderful. Sorry about that, ladies. Okay. I hope so, everyone can see. If, if anyone can't see, please just let us know. But I can certainly see. So I'm trusting if everyone else can. Okay, good. All right. Um, so, thank you very much. Uh, morning, ladies. So, while you're sipping on your coffee or picking your breakfast bagel, you're going to learn three simple ways to ask for the business, okay, without being pushy. And just so you know, we've got a teeny, we've got a mini agenda, just so you know where we're going. Uh, what you'll learn is how and when to ask, yeah, and also common mistakes to avoid and then we'll quickly talk, talk about there must be a client out there that you're waiting to hear from right so I'll also mention a mini way that you can refresh a potential customer out there who you're waiting to hear from okay and we'll also talk about how you can take your skills further because I don't want you sort of out there in the deep end on your own and then after that we'll take your questions okay so we shouldn't be more than about 20 to 30 minutes all right so we'll have time for your questions so grab a pen grab a crayon grab an eyeliner whatever you have and a napkin and let's get a crack in all right so first I'll explain what a close isn't all right because there's a massive misconception about what a close is a close is never about the end result okay depending on what you're selling you don't meet with prospects and immediately try and close them, okay? That's a recipe for disaster. Or as Mary Berry would say, it's a soggy bottom, all right? And that's the worst thing you can do, immediately to try and close people. So what is a close? That's a very good question. Well, a close is, you know, your conversation with your prospective customers is a journey, right? You're having a journey, you're on it, you're going on a journey with your prospects. So a close is about progress. Okay? It's about progress because it's a small steps along the way to get to the big yes. All right? So when do you close? When do you close? There are many there are many ways you can close along this journey with your prospective customers, okay? For example, when you're going to book a meeting. That's a mini close, right? You're asking and you're moving forward. Also, when you have follow-up meetings for demonstrations or meeting with other stakeholders, because sometimes a decision is never made by one person, right? Or, of course, when you're going to work with the customer, like that's the end result, okay? So why does it include all these steps? Because to progress a sale, it often takes small yeses along the way. It's always small yeses that leads to that wonderful, magical, yes, we want to buy from you, yay. Okay, so it's, remember, it's a journey. It's a, it's a journey you're going with someone, okay? Now, why do you close? This might sound like an obvious question, but some people don't close and they just assume the customer is going to come and say yes. See, humans, you and I, we're 
we're wired to be goal driven. It's in your DNA, right? People procrastinate. So you need to help them make a decision. All right, that's why you close. You help them make a decision so they can begin experiencing all the joy your product or service has to, help to offer them, right? You're helping them decide. I mean, think about it. If you're going out with someone, right, like I've been with my partner for, for 10 years, we wouldn't have got married if one of us hadn't asked, okay? We would have, you know, you say one of you has to ask. And in a, in a sales scenario, it's got to be you, okay? So, now that you understand why and when to close briefly, I will now share with you three ways you can ask for the sale. All right, so here are three simple sets. Now, this, these are based on the assumption that you've already met your prospects, your prospect, you know, you meet their needs, they like what you're selling, they like your service. Um, but if you haven't established any of these, then you should not be closing, okay? Now, that's a whole other conversation you and I need to have. But if you have, these are my three favorite ways to close. Okay, now the first one is called the option close, and it's simple. You give them a choice. No more than two. Okay, no more than two. You simply give them a choice. Now, I once, I'm going to give you some examples. I once used this to uh, secure a job. Okay, it's a um, quick bit, bit backstory. I had my three interviews and I was waiting to hear back from the potential employer. I hadn't heard back from them. My current employer, they wanted me to travel for a few months. So here's what I did. I went back to the uh, potential employer and I said, when do, you, when do I start, January or February? They wrote back, January, simple. I didn't say, have I got the job? Uh, that's giving them an option for a yes or no. Said, when do I start? January or February, give them an option for two dates, yeah? So here's another example. Uh, so let's say uh, you're selling like some project services, right? So you say, when, when we start the project, who will be working with? You or your colleague? Me, mostly. Good, I'll send you the questionnaire before we start. So if you like my voices. <laughs> so here's what we've done here, right? Instead of saying, uh, do you want to buy, you say, when we start the project, who will we be working with? You or your colleague? Those are the two options. And they say, me mostly. Good, I'll send you the questionnaire before we start, okay? So you're giving them an option. One more? Okay, I'll give you another example. Here you go. So this one is, imagine you're selling a product, okay? And there are multiple, you've got different options. So you say, how many would you like? 20 or 30? 20, please. Fab. I'll have them sent to you by next week. So again, you're giving them an option. How many do you want to buy? 20 or 30? You're not saying, would you like to buy it? Awkward, weird. I personally don't feel comfortable with that direct way. It's, it seems very sort of aggressive. And with this option close, you can also use it, because remember we talked about a sale as a progress? You can also use it to secure a meeting, for example, right? Because most people, when they try and book a meeting, they'll, they might say something like, do you want to meet? Again, it's really easy for someone to say no in that scenario. So here's how you can um, uh, use it to, to, to ask for a meeting. Instead of saying, do you want to meet? Or shall we book a meeting? You can say something like, I'll be near your office next Thursday or Friday. Any of these work for you? Friday at 10, please. Okay, so again, you're giving them an option because if you think about it, when you ask someone, do you want to meet? In that moment, they're probably thinking, oh God, oh my God. You know, they've, they've probably got their Facebook open, their spreadsheet, their whatever, and it's easy for them to say no. But if you say Thursday at 10, Friday at 11, they just have to click their calendar, click on Thursday and say, hmm, yes, that works. You make it really easy for them. Okay, so that's, you're making it easy to help them decide. So let's um, talk about when you can use this option close, right? When you can use it for different product features, right? So if you have different colors, different packages, or different product tiers, okay? And also we talked about dates, right, for, for the um, meeting. So dates, times, and so on. And also points of contact, logistics and points of contact, okay? So you this option close, you can use it throughout um, you know, the sales process to help move forward. So the next close, the next close is called 
the trial close. It's a wonderful close. Now, this is a close you use throughout the sales process. It's like you're testing whether they're ready to buy. A trial close tests their appetite, right? It's a magical close. And the magic words are, if we could, would you? All right? If we could, would you? Or if I could, would you? Now, I'm going to give you an example. Uh, so imagine, um, if we can show you how we can achieve your, your new X, Y, and Z, would you be happy to move forward? Not until my engineer returns from maternity leave. So in this example, you're testing their appetite, whether they're ready, and they, but they're not ready. Something else has to happen. But this is really good for you because, see, what happens is the danger is you might try and progress or whatever, and then you, they go all quiet, and you, don't, you have no idea why. But at least here you know, oh, we need to wait for someone to come back. All right? So I'll give you one more example of the trial close. But we need these changes made. Great, if we could sort that out, are we all set to go? Yes. Right, so they said we need something, something to happen. And you say, great, if we can sort that out, or if we can fix that, are you ready to go? Are we all set to go? Yes. So you're getting their commitment. Okay, you're helping, you're uncovering one more need that they might have. Right, now, the, with this trial close, the magic words, just to remind you, the magic words for this trial close if I could, would you? All right? If I could, would you? If we could is about delivering what they want. All right? And would you is about asking hypothetically if they're ready to buy. All right? Now, this trial close, the power of this trial close is amazing, right? It tests whether or not they're ready to buy. Okay, it tests their appetite. It helps you understand where they are on their journey because people buy when they're ready, right? Not when you want them to. And, and you need to know what you need to do to help them get there, okay? And it's also useful, as we saw in one of the examples, it's useful to test their appetite and uncover any reasons where they might not say no, why they might say no, rather. So you're not... Uh, so you don't get any sort of scary, unwanted surprises when you're trying to ask or they go silent, which is most likely what's going to happen, and you have no idea what's happening. So this is a good way to uncover that during your journey with them. Okay. Now, how to use this trial close? Well, you, you sort of bounce it off what they're asking for, what they ask. When they ask for something, then you can say, oh, well, if, if we can do that, are you happy to move forward? You could say, if, if you're happy with what you see here, are you, will you be ready to move forward? Again, it tests their appetite. Mm, find out what's left, what, what's left that you need to help them come to a decision. Okay, so that's a trial close. It's a magical close. Now, the third close is called the assumptive close. Again, another one favorite of mine. Again, instead of asking, do you want to buy, you just assume the next logical step is to move forward. It's, it's kind of similar to the alternative close. And I'll give you an example here. I was, well, I was coaching a client, and he, he told me he was waiting to hear. He had three meetings with his, his prospect. And he's saying, Anise, Anise, shall I? They haven't heard back from them. It's been two weeks. Shall I give them a December discount? I said, no, 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 no. You see, his product had... His product had design elements on it, right? It had different sort of features on, on, the, on the design elements. So I said, why don't you go back and talk to them about the design elements of the product? So he said, okay. So he, he booked a meeting with them, and he showed them the, the product, and he said, how many logos would you like on the screen? And they said, mm, I think two would be a good fit for us. Okay, great. What kind of questions would you like to ask? Um, I need to think about that. How many can we have? See, this conversation is, is purely assuming that they're going to use the product or service. See, in their mind, subconsciously, they're, they're visualizing what it's like to be using your product or service. Yeah? And, and it's, a, it's a subtle way of getting their commitment without being sort of pushy or, or, or very direct and which can feel awkward. Right? So I'll give you one more example since it's, it's similar. It's a similar close to the option one, so I'll give you one more example. Um, so imagine you're, you know, you're selling like a product, and you could say, uh, "Where do you want to install this?" 
Um, it's for my home office. Oh, great. When would you like to start? Uh, I need to start as soon as possible. Okay? So, do you like those voices? <laughs> so, again, it's um, you're asking them, where do you want to install this? Oh, it's for my home office. Oh, so, see, they're, they're appreciating what it's to be used for. They're visualizing where it needs to be. And then you're asking again, it's another assumptive close. When would you like to start? I need it as soon as possible. Okay, so that's how you use the assumptive close. You assume the next logical step is to work together. Now, how do you use this close? It's similar to the uh, option close we talked about earlier. Again, you can use logistics, points of contact, uh, different product features, again, different colors, packages, tiers, and so on, and, of course, dates and times. All right, so that's how you use the uh, assumptive close. Now, just to recap the, the three closes, right, the three ways to ask. Option, you give them an alternative choice, right, no more than two, because our brains love simplicity. Don't make it too difficult. And, and the trial close, right, the trial close, the magic words, remember, if we could, would you. Right? And you can you, you bounce it off there, the early conversation you've had as well as, you, you can use it at the end as well as they're deciding. And then the assumptive close. You assume the next logical step is to work together. How does January work for you? When would you like to start? How shall we move forward? Okay? Now, you might have a question. Hang on a second. Aren't these te techniques salesy? You're probably wondering, right? I have a question for you. Can you sometimes tell when someone's using them on you, or they're trying to be pushy, right? You can tell, right? See, I, li I love being sold to, but only by exceptional salespeople, which is rare, right? And after I bought it, I like to think and deconstruct it later, what they did, what they didn't do. So here's the scenario. Have you ever watched a show on Netflix or Amazon Prime where the acting is just plain bad, right? You know what I'm talking about, right? right? I and mean, what do you do? What do you do when that happens? click, right? You change the channel, no one likes bad acting, no one likes any of that sort of stuff. But with shows that you like, with impeccable acting, you carry on watching, right? You suspend disbelief, you're enjoying it. Well, talented lady salespeople who use techniques to close is like bad acting, okay? You can tell they're just in it for them. Here's the difference in how you can avoid coming off across a salesy, right? To avoid coming across a salesy, it starts with your intention. Your intention, okay? That's what makes you stand out. Focus on giving instead of getting, okay? When you're focusing all your energy, all your intention from your heart space that you are trying to serve this person, they will feel it, okay? Your, vi you know, your vibes do not lie. They can tell whether you're taking or you're giving. So focus on giving instead of getting. And also, another way is steep yourself in your purpose. Remember your why. Because when you focus on your why, you can't help but be passionate. You can't help but be authentic. And these words that you use are just gentle words that help them come to their decision. And also channel your mission. Channel your bigger why why you're doing this, okay? This, again, helps you immerse yourself in your bigger purpose so that you can channel something bigger than you, so you're not trying to just take something from someone. They can feel that you are giving, all right? So that's how you avoid coming across salesy, and that's what will make you magnetic as well, okay? Now, before we uh, continue, I want to talk to you about the common blunders, right? Common mistakes people make so that you avoid them. First of all, <laughs> You'd be surprised. Not asking is quite a common mistake. Not asking, because if you don't ask, guess what? You don't get, okay? So remember to ask. Another common mistake is trying to rush a sale, trying to rush to the end. And when you try to rush too much, you don't uncover all the objections. You end up coming in up against hurdles, silence, and all sorts of things happen. You're like, hmm, what's going on? You have no idea what's going on. Another common mistake is not establishing a need. Remember at the beginning I said, I'm assuming they want your product, they need your service, they like your product, I'm assuming all of it. If you haven't established all of that, then 
no one's going to buy because they don't buy things. People don't buy products or services. They buy something to help them fulfill a need. Okay, so that needs to be established at first. Another common mistake that people make is they're speaking to the wrong person. Not all people are in a position to make decisions. So if you're speaking to the wrong person, then you know you're, it's going to take longer, or they might go silent, or whatever happens. So that's a common mistake. And another huge one, and this is a, this is a really simple one, but it's talking too much, basically. Being afraid of silence, go asking for the clothes, and then um, uh, and then filling in, the, feeling the need to fill in the gap. Mind the gap. Leave a space in between. One time I heard an interview with um, Simon Cowell, and he was saying that when he was trying to pitch American Idol, he said he kept getting rejections, and the biggest mistake he Hello everyone, um, my screen has frozen and it looks from the questions yours has too. Um, I think Anise's um, internet, yes yeah, she's disappeared, has gone down just at the moment. I was dying to know what Simon Cowell did wrong. Um, I think, hopefully she'll come back up, so I'm just going to give her a second um, to come back up. I'm just going to close off my screen, I'm going to give her a call to let her know that she's not on screen. So hold with me and I'll be back in just a second. Hello everyone, I have just called a niece and she didn't, it didn't show her slides, so she's been delivering the rest of her presentation to herself. Um, she's just rebooting her computer now. Um, so in the meantime, if you have any questions for Anise, please do ask them, because um, she will get to questions at the end. She's still got a little bit more to explain. Um, so please do ask questions. Um, I know um, I've certainly been learning a lot and realizing the mistakes I've made. Um, so please bear with us and Anise 
will be on in just a second. Oof. Hello, I think Anise is back, finally. Oh. Are you there, Anise? I am. I'm so sorry, ladies. My screen, I don't know what happened. My computer froze. Thank you for That's your patience. Fun. We're all waiting. To have Everyone's waiting for the Simon Cowell story to finish. Oh. What's so wrong? <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, let me just jump to the right slide, sorry. Um, bear with me one second, sorry about that. That's Simon Cowell, we were, yes. Yes, yeah, so you were, mind the gap, that slide. Mind the gap, mind the gap, mind the gap, mind the gap. Okay, where is it? Um, hmm, no. It was before that. Oh, we're blunders, 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 there we go. Okay. So we're talking, oh, why is it starting at the beginning? Hmm. Sorry, I clicked the last one and then it started at the beginning. Well, bear with me. Thank you, ladies, for your patience. I really, really appreciate it. I, oh, we've had a few technical problems, but I think this beats all of them so far. Oh. Thank you, ladies. Okay, so we're talking about the biggest mistake, right? Biggest mistakes people make. Now, it was Simon Cowell. Yes, Simon Cowell. He said when he was pitching American Idol, uh, one of the mistakes he made, which he learnt, but whenever he, he kept losing his sales because he kept talking afterwards, after they said yes, he kept talking and what he ended up doing was talking himself out of a sale. And, oh, and so he ended up losing a, a lot of this, the sales because of that. Uh, so here's, so when you get the yes or when you ask, be silent. Okay, the worst you can do is going mm and going ah and then you start talking and interrupting. No. Be comfortable with the silent because you really want to find out what they're thinking. Okay, so be comfortable with silence. Now, one thing um, you can do today, one thing you can do today, right? There must be. Yes. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. The break. Do you want? I, I, I can. Do you want to just minimise your GoToWebinar screen on the right because it's blocking your slides? If there's a top arrow on the left, top left of it. A little minimise orange. it. Pointing in, yes. Top left, that's it. Click that. It should go. There you go. Yep. Got it? Okay, okay. Great. All right. All right. Okay. So one thing you can do today, I'm sure there must be someone out there, right? Who's there's a prospect out there, potential customer out there, you're waiting to hear from, back from, right? I'm sure there is one out there. And you're feeling like, hmm, what's going on? What's taking them so long? You're twiddling your thumbs, you're like, ah, what's taking them? Here's one thing you can do today to refresh that prospect, prospective person, 
you know, to remind them why you're awesome and why they need to hurry up and start working with you. Okay, so here's one thing you can do. First, find something useful to go back to them with. Okay, find something of interest that will capture their attention, that will help them, that will add value to their lives. Okay, first find something of use so that you're going back to them and you're being of value. Okay, that's, so that's what you have to, and then what you then do, here's how you can then steer the conversation towards the proposal. Now this is an example of what I've used personally to, to disclose and also my clients use this as well. Here's what you can do. Uh, these are the questions you can ask. You can say, what, what did you like about the proposal? And they'll say, oh, I really, really like your approach. You know, it's not like a salesperson. You're like your mindful approach. It aligns with my values. So how do you see it might help you and your team? Well, I can really see it working with our staff who lack confidence and, and sales experience. Great. So how would you like to move forward? See, instead of me telling them how awesome I am, you're getting them to tell you what did you like about it. How do you see it might help you? in your business or in, in what you want to achieve, okay? And how would you like to move forward? So you're getting them to remember what they like. And what that does, it amplifies their recall because they're saying it, it, it improves it in their memory why they should buy from you and of course, tiny commitments as well. So this is something you can use, those questions. What did you like? How can you see it might help? How would you like to move forward, okay? There must be a prospective customer out there you're waiting to hear back from. Go back to them, give them something useful, and then to steer the conversation, to talk about that, you know, the proposal, whatever it is you're waiting, this is what you can ask them, okay? Now, early on we talked about how you can take your skills further, okay? I promised you how, uh, so I want to quickly explain that. I don't want to leave you out in the deeper. Now, there might be some questions on your mind like, uh, how do you make them want to buy, or maybe when? what do you do when they say no, or, or how do you avoid discounting my value, or you know, gen generally maybe confidence issues as well, okay? Well, here's the answer, right? We, I have a self-study program, it's called Easy Selling for Entrepreneurs and Freelance. It's a self-study program that lets you binge watch your way to sales success, okay? Now, I'm not gonna blab about me, but here's what my customers say, they say, Help me overcome a lifetime of undervaluing. I used to lack confidence, but now I'm excited. I'm a chiropractor, but blah, 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 so on. For the sales sold, this is what they, my customers say, and I'm really grateful to serve them. Now, because I like Hannah and what you're doing and all the lovely ladies, so I've got a special for you guys, okay? I've had the joy of communicating with some of you, and I love what you're going to do. So instead of our regular price of £97, you will get discount of 67 pounds okay now with the link you'll receive a discount code okay so I'd like to invite you to, to take your skills further right and also not only that as an extra bonus you will also get access to two one-hour webinars which are valued at 197 pounds because you'll use this the products and you'll use the the learning you'll go out there try selling and you might feel ah so this is to add further support to you two bonus webinars as well okay now it's applicable before the end of Tuesday, all right? Now you'll get an email, Hannah will send you an email with all of the, the more information, okay? Now, there's only, uh, so just to recap, now you know how and when to ask, common mistakes to avoid, all right? And also you now know how you can go back today and refresh a potential customer you're waiting to hear from, okay? Now we've only got one thing left to cover, which is your, well, we talked about taking your skills further, and now your questions. Do you have any questions? Hello, Anish. Thanks. Oh, Thank hi. you very much. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's okay. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Is my camera? Uh, camera. There we go. Hi, ladies. Yeah, I love your voices, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That'll make it fun. <laughs> Excellent. So we've got a few questions. So first of all, mm. Juliet asks, mm. how do you close on email? Good question, email. I mean, ideally, when if you've had a conversation going with the, the, with the prospective customer, ideally you want to try and get them on the phone, right? I always invite people to try and get uh, 
arrange a time, arrange a time to have a quick chat with them, to instead of saying going back to them saying to, to find out why you know if you want to try and close them, if you again find something of use, find something of value to them, right? Look at their website, look at their profile, and say, hey, got something that you might be of interest in, and then and then you have that conversation, and then you use the scenario I gave you earlier about refreshing, use that as a conversation, okay? Brilliant, thank you. And Sam asks, what about if you're selling a service rather than a product? Yes, a service instead of a, a product, again, um, you can use, for example, the uh, the option close. Does your service have different sort of tiers? Do you have different added sort of service, like if you have, if you, for example, if you're an accountant, if you're selling accountancy services, do you have like tax end as well as, um, uh, I don't know, what else you do, uh, financial end or what do you know, uh, VAT, those things. You can offer those options. Which one do you, do you want this one as well, right? So you use the option close for that, but use one of the features of what use of the service you sell, yeah? Okay, brilliant. Um, and Louise asks, how do you overcome objections without sounding pushy? That's a very good question. Now, um, first of all, mind your state, yeah? Because when, when someone says no, or they have some sort of objection, the first thing we do is we get frazzled, all right? When we get frazzled, you're going into fear mode. Going into fear, you get nervous, and when you're operating from a place of nerves, of worry, then that's when you can come across pushy and desperate. And you don't really mean to, but because you're operating from that scary place, you get defensive, okay? So here's what you do. Take a breath, just for a moment, take a breath, right with me right now, take a breath, which is what I had to do when I had a breakdown of my computer, right? And that calms you down. And then what you can do, if the first thing you've got to do is you've got to understand them. So you feel that you're blah, blah, blah. You ask them, so you feel, you repeat back the objection. So you feel that this is, might not be something, and then you wait to hear what they have to say. Oh yes, I feel that you know I'm not sure. You need to understand them first. You understand what the objection is. Ah, okay. Well, I understand how you feel. Another prospect felt the same way. However, they found when they invested, they achieved X, Y, and Z outcome. Okay, I understand how you feel. Someone else felt the same, but they found when they used it. Blah blah blah. Okay. Okay, brilliant. Louise, if you if that doesn't answer your question completely, please do ask more. Um, yes. That make that made sense to me, certainly. Um, mm -hmm. Sabrina asks, how do you handle being in a competitive situation and it comes down to price and your price is higher? Great question, Sabrina. Price. Ooh. People pay for value. What I advise is when it comes to comes to that sort of conversation. It again, it depends. I mean, if it's ideally, you want to try and get to the conversation with them, have a physical convers, uh, you know, get them on the phone or in person. Remind them of the value. Okay, put take price out of the equation. So I understand price is important. You know, obviously it is, but let's just quickly talk about what you know what you want to achieve here and then you you take the conversation back to their outcome and what they want to achieve what you're trying to do is find out a bit more find out a bit more so that you can then you're in a position to then demonstrate how you're adding more value than competitors okay see so, so take price aside for a moment you're not saying you're not discounting it. it is important put it aside let's go back to what you're trying to achieve and get them remembering their value okay Okay, great. And Louise said that, that was very good practical advice. Thank you for the question about overcoming objections. You're welcome, Louise. Thanks for asking. <laughs> um, so, Lucy, oh, uh, Lucy asked, will you send us a replay? Um, yes, Lucy, you will get a replay and you can fast forward all the blank bits. Yes, where... please do. <laughs> He's disappeared. <laughs> um, Joanna asks, can you suggest any techniques of boosting confidence? I tend to go in expecting a no, and I want to change my mindset to expecting yes. This is really, really good. I know this is something a lot of people think. They already expect to fail, and they oh. go in with expectation. Yeah, okay. So if you're expecting a no, then your, your vibe attracts, right? Your vibes don't lie, right? You're, you can't fake your frequency. If they can feel you're expecting a no, 
guess what? Right? We we can smell. We can smell it. Right? So you you your body. So here's what you can do. And this has worked for me. Oh my God! I landed when I started my first business um, five years ago. I landed my first customer by doing this. Before the meeting, I visualized the meeting going really well. Obviously, I forgot to visualize this. We're going really well. <laughs> but I visualize the meeting going really well. All right. Visual Athletes use this, they swear by this method. So I visualize the meeting going really well, the client asking the right question. Da, da. What this does, it's training you, priming your brain to be ready for that kind of, you, you, because you've already got those wired networks in your brain to be nervous. So what you want to do is start wiring networks in your brain to be a bit more confident. So visualize that, and it gives you a little boost. Because all you can do is manage your state. When you're feeling confident, when your mindset's confident, you will sound confident, you will act confident. It's natural. You know, your, your, your thoughts produces your, your actions and, and what you say. Visualization. Visualize it going really well before. Okay? Before a meeting, before a call. I think that is amazing advice. I trained as a therapist, um, and it was cool. We used to call it future rehearsal. Um, oh. so we were rehearsing with something that happens, and we do that a lot. And it's really, really powerful. What I do, and I do this, I've done this about myself, and about if I want to have different qualities, if I want to be more confident about myself, before I go to sleep every night, I will imagine the situation I'm going to be in, and I will imagine them going exactly as Anise said, going as really as I want. And it, and it puts the, it gets the neural pathways going in your brain, and your brain sets patterns and expectations for it going really, really well. And it's much more likely to happen. And actually, it's quite freaky sometimes. I don't know if, if you've experienced any. Yeah, yeah. I, that the example. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't finish it. I actually got the yes. I got the the, the yes from the customer. Uh, it's so powerful. And I also use it before I speak as well, because I used to be really, really nervous at public speaking. Visualization just helped me. It, it is. It's really, really weird. I, I discovered this by accident as a teenager, and I was really shy. And I used to imagine myself being different. And there was a period of time when my life would reflect these fantasies I'd created, and I thought I had magic powers for all the time. And then later on, when I qualified as a therapist, I realised what it was. But um, it's it's really, really powerful. So I can I, I can highly recommend that. Yeah. Good. Any more questions? So um, Joanna says thank you. Um, We've got about five more minutes if anyone wants to ask another question. If not, we will wrap up here. So if I don't get a question, uh, Martine said, thank you, Anise. Excellent. Very thought-provoking. Thank you for organizing it, Hannah. You're very welcome. I love these as much as, as hopefully you enjoy watching them. Um, Sabrina says, thanks for advice. I'm going to start this immediately. Brilliant. I found, Sabrina, the best time to do it is before I go to sleep at night. So when I'm in bed, and I'm just kind of, you know, you're letting your thoughts unravel for the day. I play what I call videos in my head of what I want to happen. I play the same video every night, so you get this repetitive thing. Um, and that really works. So, And also, if you're a busy person, and particularly a mother, you have no other time in the day to think yeah. about. So, yeah. um, actually, One thing to add on that, what's really crucial about this visualization thing is you've, it's got to be emotion attached to it. When you connect it with emotion, it's even more powerful because that's how we form memory, right? We form memory when there's an emotion attached with an event. Events on their own, they don't, like for example, everyone can remember where they were on 9-11, but no one can remember where they were on 8-11 or 7-11, right? 9-11 is because there's this massive emotion attached to it. So, you know, whenever you're doing it, you've got to feel the, the, the joy of the success of doing that. I did it last week. I visualized... Um, I was at this event and I visualized being on stage. Two hours before, I visualized vividly being on stage and two hours later, I was called on stage. <laughs> okay, that's getting a bit woo-woo now, sorry. <laughs> you probably now just ruined your reputation for anything business-like. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thank you. That is brilliant. That has been very good. Technical things aside, maybe next time visualize technology not breaking down. Yes. <laughs> yes. But, you know, I mean, I've run quite a few webinars now, and I have never not had a live problem. And I now know why people don't do these live very often. Um, just because this happens all the time. So don't worry. Yeah, yeah. I did a one hour one two days ago and it was completely fine. So it's just the first time I've had this sort of hitch. Sorry about that. Thanks for your patience, ladies. I appreciate it. 
Thank you very much. So I'm going to sign off here. Thank you everyone for joining us. I'm going to send out a replay of this so you, you can um, watch it later. Um, I can say fast forward the bits where the, the screen goes blank. Um, and I will be sending out a link to Anise's training as well um, with the code if you want to sign up for, for the TLC discount. Um, and I don't know, do you want to send out a copy of the slides as well, Anise? Um, I can send those out to people. Yes, I can like. create it as a PDF to, to send out. Yeah. yeah. So we'll send you out. I know that that was quite popular last time, so we'll send out the slides. So I hope you all have a lovely weekend. And thank you so much, Anise, for that. That was brilliant. Thanks, Hannah, for arranging. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Okay. All right. Bye. Take care, ladies. Bye.